I wanna make this short and simple. I wanna talk about something that's on my chest and the reality is that I seen this, it was posted by somebody and they were basically asking for people to, um, and I wanna go about this properly. I wanna go about it in a way that my heart goes out to the medical professionals, uh, the nurses, doctors who are actually exposing themselves to sick people and infectious diseases and things like that. And I pray that you're taking good care of yourself. Um, I, I pray that you're taking care of your immune system, you're taking care of your body, you're taking care of your mindset. And by doing that, um, your risk would be very low. And I know that many of you, uh, many of the medical professionals and nurses may be scared in this time, uh, scared that they may infect their uh, their family members and things like that. And I think that's what the, uh, the post uh, by somebody on Facebook, a friend of mine, um, she posted it um, saying, thank a medical professional in this time. Uh, but I want to read you the article or a piece and parts of the article. And I'll, uh, I'll get on Facebook here real quick and I'll even uh, post the links here uh, in the comments below. But here's the deal. This is what medicine does. The reason that's kind of upsetting to me is because when you read the article and then you just jump on PubMed and you do a quick search for inhalers and sudden cardiac and respiratory failure, uh, cardiac failure specifically, which comes with the symptoms of difficulty breathing and sudden death. And that's exactly what happened to this young man. So they posted an article. Uh, it's Sandusky Register. Um, it's update. Now it's a different title where before the title on Facebook, the title that they were showing on Facebook was basically uh, young man dies, it was something like young man dies of, um, dies outside of like Kroger, um, suspected case of COVID-19, uh, with, for breathing problems. And yes, there was nurses there right there at that moment in time when this young man fell over. And I guess he actually said, he looked at, uh, this nurse said, he looked at me and said, I'm going to die. Hughes, the nurse, posted on social media, I dropped my purse and instinctively started compressions. I had to. And I thank God, thank God, thank God for nurses and individuals who are trained to be able to intervene and attempt and do everything you can, attempt or even save the life of individuals such as this young man. This young man was 28 years old. Um, but now the updated post on this article is update, man tests negative man tests negative for coronavirus. But initially, initially, the headlines were reading as if the man died of coronavirus. So they're basically creating scare um, and fear and, and spreading a spirit of fear that is ultimately um, the real epidemic and pandemic that our world is facing right now and people are facing. If people understood how to take care of themselves, if they understood um, how to reduce, you know, the primary risk factors and risk factors that um, coincide with the risk of, there it is. Uh, so I posted the article in um, Facebook here. Um, and then I'll post something else. But if you read through the article, the young man sitting in a bench outside the store, according to Perkins police report, um, she told the police he had took two doses of his inhaler before collapsing. He took two doses of his inhaler before collapsing. All right. Now he was given this inhaler because inhaler roughly a month ago because he had symptoms of the common uh, cold or flu. So he had some respiratory infection signs. Um, so I'll see people for just nasal congestion. It's sad. They'll get inhalers. Um, and not very often I'll see that, but I'll see it uh, when people have respiratory problems. Um, this can be caused from asthma, from allergies, from COPD, and other issues. Um, the reality is this, though. This young man died because he went to the wrong doctors. He went to doctors who basically do nothing than prescribe drugs and don't seek out the underlying causes of why the man was suffering, why this young man was suffering with symptoms, why his body was calling out saying, ah, something's wrong. I need healing. I need restoration. They're not a restorative healthcare system. They are a symptomatic treatment system. And because of that, the next article I'm going to post you is one about inhalers. And here I'll read you the title just in a second. 
So I'm posting these in the comments. That's where you get it on Facebook and on YouTube. Um, when we post this on YouTube in the future, you'll see it. What can one use instead of an inhaler, Amy said. Um, so that's one thing I, I honestly, I have not sought out instead of a rescue inhaler. And there are lives that are saved by rescue inhalers when they're absolutely critical. But the use of things like Advair and other regular use inhalers or inhalers that are rescue use or used frequently, literally you should not be using those inhalers unless it is a severe life-threatening asthma attack or breathing attack, okay? Because, listen to this, Cornell Chronicles, this comes from Cornell University, common asthma inhalers cause up to 80% of asthma-related deaths, Cornell and Stanford researchers assert. And this was a meta-analysis of, of, of thousands, 33,826, it was 19 published studies. Now in the aftermath, if you read about Advair, you actually find out that the maker, GlaxoSmithKline, lied about the safety of Advair, concealing an increased death risk. So yeah, you no, you're not saving lives if out of the majority of people, if more people die because of using the inhaler. That's what the data and evidence shows, yet those are still on the market and they can still be used and they can still be prescribed and people use it on a regular basis. And it can sudden, cause sudden cardiac arrest or make asthma attacks worse. And GlaxoSmithKline, like I said, liars lie. In another post, liars lie. The pharmaceutical and medical community have lied to the American people more than any other industry, according to U.S. Court of Federal Claims. U.S. Court government documents show the pharmaceutical industry lies to the American people more than any other industry out there. They're lying to us now, without a shadow of a doubt. I had a patient this morning who said a family member had some common cold symptoms, wanted to get tested for COVID-19, went into the doctors, and guess what? You don't have the symptoms of COVID-19, so we refuse to test you. So he went to another medical physician, went to another doctor's office, lied about his symptoms to make it coincide with COVID-19. They tested him, and he tested positive when he had other symptoms that weren't the typical symptoms. Everybody has different symptoms. Yeah, there can be the usual symptoms of an illness, but the reality is every single person infected with the same virus are not going to carry out the exact same symptoms. Medicine, medical physicians, like how do they get degrees? How do they actually feel and, and, and brag about their certificates, their doctorates? Oh, everybody has to have exactly the same symptoms if they get the cold virus. No, they don't. They refuse to test him at one doctor's office. So he goes to another doctor's office, lies about his symptoms, and tests positive. What if it wasn't even a test positive? What if the medical physicians just wanted to be like, you know what? Let's just call it a positive test because he's got the symptoms and the test isn't really accurate. We don't even know. We have no freaking clue what they're doing. They have no freaking clue what they're doing. This time right now is infuriating me. And going back to my major point here, listen to this. So my friend wanted to thank a medical professional and thank those who would risk their own lives to save other people like policemen, like firemen, like our nurses and doctors that work in the atmosphere of truly saving a life in an emergency situation. But this young man's death, let me read you some Cornell University again, asthma inhalers, 80% of asthma related deaths could be caused by the inhalers themselves. Four out of five people are likely dying as a result of using the medical devices they use to treat the symptoms of a serious underlying neurological or immunological event. Immunological or neurological cause, those are the two primary causes of asthma. And many people with reactive airway disease. Reactive. It's overreactive. Why is it overreacting? What controls the reaction? The immune system and the nervous system. Go check those two symptoms or those systems. Figure out the underlying causes and heal people. Don't just keep pushing drugs down their throat because the pushing of drugs has led to thousands of children every single year dying from asthma. But no, they're not dying from asthma. They're dying from the treatments doctors give them for their diagnosis of asthma. Because if you go to PubMed, here's a nice PubMed article, and I'll post it. Cardiovascular morbidity and use of inhaled 
bronchodilators. Oh, bronchodilators like this young man was prescribed for his cold and flu symptoms a month prior, and then he used it on a regular basis probably, which then led to a cardiac event. And if you go to Mayo Clinic and sudden cardiac arrest, because that's what it, exactly what it sounds like this young man died from. Looked at the nurse, said, I'm having trouble breathing, I'm gonna die, and died. You don't suffocate in that way. It's not breathing that causes that. But let me read this to you. Sudden cardiac arrest. Sudden collapse. No pulse, no breathing, loss of consciousness. No pulse because your, your heart goes into arrest. Chest discomfort, shortness of breath, weakness, palpitations. Chest pain, discomfort. Rapid irregular heartbeat, unexplained wheezing, shortness of breath. Fainting or near fainting, light, lightheadedness and dizziness. I hope when they do the autopsy in this young man, they will do a screening of his heart and do the test necessary to determine whether he was killed by the medical profession and pharmaceutical profession that doesn't care about healing people. They only care about dealing to people their drugs. Yes, I agree that the nurse had no idea why that man died. If it was a, a, a transmittal infectious disease that was complicating his health, and causing him to have that shortness of breath, that could have been. And I thank God for nurses who would say, you know what, my life in this moment doesn't matter. I'll go over and do chest compressions. Thank you, Jesus, for those individuals that would do that. But the point is that man likely is dead today because of the inhaler he was prescribed while doctors didn't care about finding out why he was sick in the first place. All the symptoms, bronchodilators and acute cardiac death. American Journal of Respiratory Care and Medicine, Critical Care and Medicine. Folks, like I said, the medical medicine, M-E-D-I-S-I-N, when they do this type of thing, when they cause the death of thousands of children every single year from asthma, or they call it asthma, but yet the deaths are caused from their inhalers themselves, causing cardiac arrest, sudden unexplainable death, sudden unexplainable death. And then they go out and they say, you need more of us. You need, we need more money to study drugs and treatments for all these children who are being stricken with breathing disorders and autoimmune conditions and asthma. We need more of your money. We need more of your praise. Look at the lives we're saving of these asthma patients, but yet your drugs are making them worse. And the drug company was found guilty for lying about the fact that Advair would make breathing disorders worse and kill people. And they don't even take their drug off the market. They can still make money. They lied about the safety, killed people. They're murderers, they're thieves. So it, it just is upsetting to me that on one hand, yes, but realize who you're thanking and realize the circumstances when the medical profession deserves thanks and praise. At times when they risk their lives to jump in the water and save a drowning victim. Yes, thank you, God, for those individuals. When a nurse runs in, doesn't care if blood is squirting out of somebody's arm and she runs up and puts a tourniquet on it to save a man's life or anybody's life in a car accident. Thank you, Jesus, for that person who said my life and my exposure to possibility of a sexually transmitted, a, a bloodborne illness or a infectious disease virus that maybe is transmitted through respiratory drug. I don't care. My life doesn't matter. Someone else is on the line. I'm going to do what I can to save them. Thank God for those instances. In that instance, thank God for anyone who would step up and risk their life to save another. But more people need to understand that the medical profession needs to be condemned for the fact that they allow the pharmaceutical companies to continue to kill people for profits and lie about the safety of their drugs. And then medical professions who may be unknowingly, unknowingly prescribing drugs like inhalers, like this young man at 28 years old was taking and using for a condition the doctors didn't even know what it was. 
Maybe the doctor didn't know that the drug he was giving that young man to treat his symptoms had such a severe risk of killing that young man. And while I understand that this, I cannot, without an autopsy, without a toxicology report and everything like that, I cannot tell you exactly why this young man died. But you know what? I truly believe in my spirit, what God's called me to study, what I've been studying my life to realize and see and understand. When I read he has been using an inhaler for the last month since going to doctors for having flu-like symptoms, I realized one, he went to doctors who didn't want to know why he was sick and figure that out. Or they were just uneducated. They were so poorly educated on the causes of diseases, illnesses, and symptoms that all they could do in their own power, within their own toolbox, was give him an inhaler so when his breathing got difficult, here's an inhaler. Try that. Maybe that's what the doctor did. But ultimately, thousands of people every year in just asthma alone are dying according to Cornell University, because they are using asthma inhalers. I think I didn't post this last PubMed article, but I will right now. Search the comments, you'll find the PubMed articles. And then you can go to those PubMed articles and you can see to the right-hand side, a bunch more studies confirming what I just said. It's ridiculous what's going on right now. And I see that kind of thing. And I want to point out that if we started to realize that our whole... People are saying this. Here's my final thought. People are saying this right now. That COVID-19, coronavirus, pandemic, and scare, and quarantine, and all this is going to go down in history as medicine's greatest deception They're going to say healthcare's greatest deception they ever committed was COVID-19 and shutting down the world. That's not their greatest deception. The greatest thing they've done to deceive people is convince the world that they're healthcare. Because they're not about healing people. They're about disease management. They're about watching people get worse. They're about testing people to confirm whether they have a virus, supposedly, that they have no treatments for. Then send the person home. Go home. We tested positive. Quarantine yourself. If you get worse, come back to us when you get worse. And then we'll make a bunch more money because then we'll have to do emergency care for you. That's not health care. They gave no advice to friends of mine who are stuck at home right now, quarantined, with tested positive for coronavirus. They gave no advice whatsoever except for go home, stay away from people. That's it. Nothing else. Not a single other positive piece of advice. If you get bad, call us and we'll come get you with the emergency department. Not even eat oranges. Stay away from sugar. Not nothing. Nothing at the simplest level of what could help somebody support their immune system in this time that could help them overcome any virus. That's horrible health care. That's not health care in any ways. That's the greatest deception that they've committed is convincing somebody that the world that their health care. They're not health care. They're drug dealers for the most part. And they're disease managers. That's it. That's all they are. People who help you heal are the ones that are delivering the health care in America. Love you all. Share the truth. Don't just like it. It's the only way we save lives. Let's get the links to the articles and PubMed research in the comments on Facebook. See ya.